Hey everyone, how's it going? This is a dick guide for a tactician in Ardal Nilfgaard dick. Uh, past the latest balance, patch 3.1. Uh, calling it a patch is quite generous, it's almost a mini expansion, a ton of changes going on, so this is, in my opinion, probably the best uh, Nilfgaard deck out right now. Uh, there's a couple of variants, I've been playing around with a few different types, and this seems to be the best list uh, in my experience out of the few I've tried. So it's based off a list from Shinmiri, fellow Aratuza teammate. Uh, I've made a few changes, there's a few te uh, tech spots in here as well, a few flex cards uh, depending on the current meta, uh, but so far I've had pretty good results with it. So I'm going to run you guys through the list where I'm going to voice over my plays and why I made certain things and do what I do. So before we get into that, let's run through the list. So I think we'll start at the top this time. So top end, we're playing Ardell, we have uh, eight tactics in this deck so we get to seize a unit of five or less power uh, so starting at the top we have Vigo's muzzle pretty standard Ardell card so we can lock and seize an enemy unit with five or less power so pretty critical very common uh, and very good in this deck we have portal so portal is an interesting choice a lot of Nilfgaard Ardell decks have been running portal and the pure use of this is to pull two fire scorpions so this is the Fire Scorpion, it's a 4 provision, 4 power machine, and it deals 1 damage to a unit on order, and it has 1 charge, and it gets a new charge every time you play a tactic. So considering we have quite a few tactics, these work very well, and ideally we play Portal and we get 2 in 1 turn, so very nice. Now we have Seret. Uh, we have Seret, Letho, and Orcs, so we have the Witch Trio. There are some lists that don't actually run these, I found it's still probably best to include them, but uh, you could maybe replace them for something, but I, I much prefer to have them. So we have all those three. We also have Bribery, another very strong tactic card. So this creates and plays a unit from your opponent's starting deck. So in the mirror, uh, it can be very, very good. Uh, depending on who you're going up against, it can be less effective. So if it doesn't, the card you get doesn't gel with your deck, then it might not be as good. But overall, it's a really solid tactic. Now, we run a Sire here. So this is the first of a couple of flex spots that I would call in this deck. So the original list called for Swears in this slot. I found Swears to be not that effective right now. Uh, there's normally not many engines you're seizing at three and they, while you can set them up with the Fire Scorpions, I found it better to have a Sire and shuffle a tactic back into our deck and play it again with Minnow Cohorn. So that's a, that's a bit of a flex spot. You can kind of choose what you like, or if you don't like either of these, maybe you've got something better. So with a Sire, putting them in the ranged row will shuffle a card from your graveyard into your deck, so you can do kind of funky things like playing a Vigo's Muzzle, shuffling it back into your deck with a Sire, and then playing it again with Minnow Cohorn. You can do the same with Bribery, or really anything else. So, I like it. It gives a good, good bit of versatility, and there are some games where having two Vigos muzzles just wins you the game. So, I like that, having that flex spot. Next up, we have Milton. So, we do actually run Milton and Palmerin. These are the new knights added in the Crimson Curse expansion. So, Milton's a 5 power, 8 provision unit. You deploy, damage the enemy by 1, and if you death blow, you damage adjacent units by 2. But if you're holding Palmerin, you get the death blow automatically. So, this is often just a 10 for 8, which is really, really good. And if you can do it by killing the unit with your one damage, then you get 10 for 8 pretty much all the time. So it's a really good card, and there doesn't need to be too much setup, especially if you're holding Palmerin. So I think they're pretty good. Hefty Helg, pretty standard, we've got a lot of tactics, so Hefty Helg's going to be very good. It's a shield uh, with 4 power, so it's not that powerful. Uh, if you're going up against the mirror, then Attorney Just will deal with this very swiftly. But otherwise, if you can keep it alive, it'll do 2 damage for every charge you play as a order. And it starts with one charge. So it's a very good uh, removal target or setup for Milton. And if your opponent can't remove it, then it's going to be doing a ton of damage. Next up, we've got Mina Cohorn. So this is a soldier, two power, eight provisions, deploy range, play a tactic from your deck. So very key card. We can pull any tactic we want, providing it's not in our hand or our graveyard. So often used to pull, say, a muzzle or a bribery. Uh, or if it's the end of the game and we have these in hand, we can just play any one of our other tactics. And like I said, it's great for a Sire if we want to play a Sire, shuffle, say, Bribery back into the deck. We can then pull it with Minnow. Easy game, no worries. Artorias. Now this is an interesting choice. This is probably another flex spot in the 8 provision slot. So, it came with the Crimson Curse expansion as well. So deploy, you get to create a 1 power copy of a bronze unit from your starting deck. So why this is quite good here is because we only have 3 bronze units. 
three types. So we have the Fire Scorpions, we have the Imperial Brigade, and we have the Venon Dal Elite. So the ideal move with this is to play this round one, pull an Imperial Brigade, and then pull both of these from your deck. So ideally you have both of these in the deck, you create a one power Imperial Brigade with Artorias, and then you summon that and you pull both of these. Now that works more often than you'd think, uh, it doesn't always, so later on if you end up with this in your hand and no brigades you can use it to play another fire scorpion which isn't bad, uh, or even just an elite if you've got a few tactics. So I like it, it also has assimilate which synergizes with the imperial diplomacy and bribery, so it's not too bad. Um, if you're finding it to never really land you could probably swap it out for swears uh, or something else, but I like to find it, I find it being pretty good so I like to keep them in there. So getting down to our bronzes now, we got the two Imperial Brigades, like we said, for the thinning, we have two Imperial Diplomacies. We have two Assassinations, which are good removal. I have one Markham Ale, so this is another flick spot. So this is kind of what I'm calling the bomb slot of this deck. So the original list, I think, ran Northern Wind, but it really depends on what your current meta is. So if you want to run Northern Wind, and you want to banish, say, Blue Stripes Commandos, Redanians, Roaches, then you can chuck that in there. You could also run a moon dust if you want to purify units with shield probably not as good overall but maybe in your meta it's needed a lot of artifacts you could run dancing star um a few different things here or you could even just run a nilf guardian knight if you just want some points so there's a few different things lock i am running a mahakam ale right now as the main use of that is to unlock a fire scorpion or a hefty helg which happens to get locked pretty much all the time and I often found with running the bombs, you'd just be using them as points at the end. And 5 boost is better than 4 damage when you just need points. So it's up to you. I'm running this. I could really see almost any of these 5 provision cards being effective. Um, Thunder, Swallow, a lock, uh, Purify, Weather Removal, whatever. It just depends on your current meta. So I'm running the Ale. I'll probably swap it out for one of these uh, if I'm seeing a lot of fault Test or something like that. Now of course we have the Venendal Elite, so this is the primary round 1 point giver. So boost by stuff by 1 for each tactic in your hand. So we often have 3, 4, 5 tactics in hand round 1, so if we got 2 of these, those are 9 point cards if we have 5 in hand. So they're very good at just holding fast in round 1, giving you some early game points. And end of the round, or end of the game rather, they're normally not too bad either. Tourney Just has been buffed a bit in the latest patch, now deals 4 damage or boost by 4 and it removes shield, or gives shield. So in the mirror, it's actually really nice. You can play it against an opponent's hefty helg, remove its shield, damage by four, kill it. Uh, if you're playing a Fulthest and they play a Dahlia into Blue Stripes Commander, you can kill that. Uh, or you can just use it for shield and boost by four to protect a Fire Scorpion or something. So very nice all around, uh, and it's a tactic, of course. And then we have the Fire Scorpions. So that's the list. The normal strategy I generally go for is to round one, you almost always get to play your Imperial Brigades, whether it's from just playing one or getting one through Artorias and thinning your deck that way. And depending on your mashup, you may want to play Portal if you've got it. It's a really good power play, especially for round one, but you might want to save it for later. I'd probably go 50-50 uh, overall. If I've got it, I almost always play it, but getting Portal in your opening hand every game is not super likely. So it really just depends on the matchup. And then you can really use just a combination of your removal spells, your elites are really good round one, uh, and then a combination of your golds. Depends how you want to do it, Hefty Helg's normally around three for me, but again up to you. Mino can be pulled out early if you need to pull out a prime tactic like Muzzle or something. And then Asaya works really well uh, round two if you, it's almost, it's not quite carryover, but it kind of works in the same way, right? So you play this round two, you shuffle back, so B goes Muzzle, and then you either draw it again, or you play Muzzle with Mino. So it works really well that way. And then just for points, you've got your Witches, you've got your Milsons and your Palmerins, you've got your Assassinations, uh, and you're hopefully getting pings off your Scorpions whenever you play them. So that's generally how it works. So what I'm going to do is we're going to jump into some gameplay. We've got two games, one win, one loss, and I'm going to explain my plays, why we did certain things, and how we got to the outcome that we did. So I'm gonna get my face off the screen and we're gonna get right into the gameplay. All right, so here we are. So we're coming up against a Meave, which is gonna be a fairly common matchup you'll probably find with Northern Realms being so prevalent right now. 
So starting off, we want to make sure we don't brick. So it's quite easy to brick a lot of things in this deck. So priorities, right? So we're going to have one Imperial Brigade, track the Fire Scorpions, no portal. I really don't want to draw the other Imperial Brigade. So we're going to take it as is. It's very important with this deck. You've got a lot of chances to brick with your Brigades, with your portal. So you just got to be careful. Generally, I found to not take risky Milligans is a good idea. Starting with the Brigades is always a good bet. Uh, thins your deck. Solid play, six points. So we start there. Vin and Elite next. So we've got four tactics in hand, which is fairly common. So we're getting eight points. Now this is looking a bit scary, so we want to make sure we get rid of Nathaniel, because one problem with this deck is that if you don't have a good round one opener and you are on bad coin, as in going first, then you can be pushed into like an even state pretty easily. So Portal and Artorius normally set up really well for that, so you have a really powerful opener. But if not, you kind of have to put some big plays in early, otherwise you're going to get pushed. So the idea here was that I was going for a damage and then probably uh, Palmerin to get rid of Anna, but he boosted back up. So we're kind of running into some issues here, because we're going to get caught up very fast. But luckily we have a couple of ways to do it, so we do that, and I'm hoping next turn we can drop Palmerin into Anna and get rid of her. So while we could do that, I instead decide to get rid of the blue stripes. We could have passed there as well, but ideally I didn't want him to pull that blue stripes out and I thought it unlikely that he would be able to get 8 points in a turn. So this is nice, he doesn't quite catch up, so we take this pass uh, 1 point under even and say look if you want to just end and draw on even, that's fine, we can do that. Uh, or he can win the round. So that's fine. So we let him win the round, no worries. This deck almost works better if we lose the first round. It really depends on the matchup, but being able to play uh, two Fire Scorpions right at the start of round three is really strong and puts your opponent on the back foot quite well. So we draw in here again. Pretty good hand. We don't want to try and brick ourselves with Portal, so we're kind of looking for Portal right now. Uh, can't find it, but we do also need something to chuck uh, in round three. So we do find Portal. And our opponent plays for better. So this is when we need to say, all right, we need to punish you for pushing. So I make sure to have a play that's more than seven points. So I do end up going with Seret, uh, which is eight. And then if we can stay ahead, it guarantees us a card up in round three. Unless uh, we just end the game in round two, which would be unideal. Now coming up, I think this is the play that's lost us this game. So here's spoiler alert, this is the game that's a loss. So we actually, I actually use my leader ability and take Pavetta. And I think that was a bad play. It was unnecessary. We could have just played Venadal Elite and just let it go. Uh, but instead I was kind of pressured by the fact that they were getting Vitality. So I took it with our leader ability. We do in fact win the round a card up. But I think not having our leader ability was very, very crucial in round three. And we do end up losing. So in hindsight, I wouldn't have done that. So here we are, another good hand. I don't want to risk drawing into my Fire Scorpions. So I get rid of that. I get lucky, don't hit the other one and see they're both in the deck, so that's ideal. So we can start off with either the Scorpion or the Helg. I do start with the Helg. Uh, either one would do the job. So luckily the Helg does stay in place. This is a pretty good opportunity. I do high roll the Imperial Diplomacy, so I'm kind of thinking, well, if we get a point of damage, then we'll be able to kill Vez, and we do get it with the Ballista. I think it's fairly likely. Um, I don't know the stats, but, you know, there's a lot of one-point damage cards in Northern Realms, so... We do that, we get our tactic ping, and we kill Vez. And now we're in a really strong position. I demand satisfaction. Now. So we do lose the Helg, and now it's the time to drop our Scorpions. So we could have dropped our Scorpions maybe a turn earlier, but I did really want to kill Vez, so we did that. Now we've got two, two Scorpions on the field. We'll he plays Vizigurd, which is not very good. But does set up something to come. So I do drop the Bribery here. Hoping for a Warfare card, but didn't hit it. So this is when Bribery kind of bricks you. This is a pretty bad Bribery. The best is Nathaniel. We don't have any boost, so it's just a 5-pointer. It's not it's not absolutely terrible, but it's nothing to write home about. So setting these, setting these up to 3 is a actually a purposeful uh, setup. So it means we can do Palmerin or Milton and then do the other one the turn after. So we're either damaged by 2 and then 1 or 1 and then 2. 
so it sets them up. So Roche does come down. And I do want to take out that blue stripes. So we eat that with mana. And then we use the fire scorpion and set that up for two. So now we've got a pretty clear shot with uh, Palmer and, and Milton wherever we like. Finally. Remember they trigger automatically if the other one's in the hand. Uh, they don't need their death blow effects. So I do actually pull this back. So we should play Palmerin, uh, Milton, sorry. So we do uh, put him in the back, get the 10 value right there. And now this is the turning point. <laughs> so we do get Drow. Now I think we did play this pretty well, so I put Palmer in there in order to give our lowest health unit a shield, which means uh, it's a lot harder, to, well one hit harder to get through from the Cadwini Revenants. So I kill one, put a shield on Meno, so it's another hit uh, of free damage. But this does end up losing us the round, and like I said earlier, you can get bricked quite easily. And so we end up with a bricked Letho here. He's still 6 points, which of course is nothing that bad. Um, but he'd be a lot better if he had Sira in hand or something like that. So that's the risk with running Sira, uh, Orcs and Letho, and then playing uh, Sira early. So now we have Letho who does nothing. So as you can see, we do only lose this by two points, so it was quite a close one. But I think if we'd held our leader ability uh, and gone down a card even, if we had to, or gone even, then we would have won. So here we are, we're coming up again against Ethne. I respect nothing. Another pretty common matchup you probably faced, like a Scorch uh, Shiru match. So again with the Mulligan here, we want a priority. So we want to chuck away one Imperial Brigade. Now we're good, chuck away a Fire Scorpion, and we're good to go. So now this is the opposite side, so we're not starting. So if you have a really strong opener with this deck, you can often very reliably push into even. Um, if you're on the right coin and then force them to go a card down later or even just go for the 2-0 so if you have a super opening like Artorius into uh, you know triple Imperial Brigade into portal into double fire scorpion like it's a really tough opening to beat unfortunately we didn't quite get that here so right now we just want to kind of play some points out the good thing is that we kind of have just you know random cards that aren't like game winners you know so turn these and stuff we can just play these out um, without any real risk uh, of falling behind. But we don't want to get lost too far. So Imperial Diplomacy is pretty good here, so we do get a 6 point on that, which is probably near the high end. And we just want to make sure we save our really good stuff for later. So I wasn't quite sure what we were playing up and playing uh, in this matchup until that particular play there, and then I see all my units are at 3. So I'm like, alright, we're playing Shuru. <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty open to a Shuru at this point, but then, you know, we've set ourselves up for it, and I probably should have boosted my own unit here, but honestly, in the end, it really doesn't matter. If he plays Shuru now, then we're just going to pass. So it's it's not a huge concern. So he does go for this, which just seems pretty unnecessary, honestly, but, you know, whatever. He's 30, we're 12, pretty clear pass, so we just drop the pass here. So at this point, I'm pretty confident we're playing a Shuru deck. Um... Probably Scorch as well. Most people run both, though you could just run one feasibly. And this is a pretty nice draw. So we've got our portal, so that means we can get our two fire scorpions. We just want to make sure we don't brick them. But here's an interesting thing. So we have to chuck a card in round two to win. And we don't really have much. So I do just chuck Palmer in. Um, I want to save a Sire for later because we don't have, really have any good tactics in our graveyard. We need Minnow, uh, Milton, in my opinion, is better than Palmerant on his own, and I really want the lock. So I do do that. So here, make sure we chuck the Fire Scorpions. Artorias isn't that good. And now we do have a Nella Mulligan, but like I said, I find it best to not be overly risky. So if we drew another Fire Scorpion there, that would have made Portal pretty average. So I didn't risk it. So now we open with double Fire Scorpions. And with, you know, three tactics in hand, this ain't bad. And this play, I think, was somewhat poor by him. So this pretty much confirms to me that he is not playing Scorched, or at least doesn't have it in hand. Because if you're playing an eight power unit on your first turn, you don't have Scorch in hand. Because that's just silly. So if he hadn't done that and maybe played the Crown Splitter first, I would be pretty constantly worried for Scorch and maybe would have played uh, inefficiently to avoid it. 
so we're just continuing on here. I don't mind putting things up because, you know, it's lower than his 8 and his 8 has immunity, so no worries. I'm just still wary of Shiro, especially now. So I know he set up 3's last round, or round 1, and didn't use them, so I'm pretty pretty um, aware of a 3 power Shiro at this point. I haven't seen any boost, so... And now we just have mainly uh, proactive plays that we need to make, because there's not much we can do on board. So I do end up chucking a Sae down here. I'm kind of considering, you know, do we Sae, do we Minnow, but no, we do a Sae and chuck Bribery back into the deck. So now we have the option of playing Bribery or Vigo's Muzzle with Minnow. But the idea with that was that it doesn't look like we're going to be playing Muzzle, so I think we're going to get more value of pulling a Bribery, which is proactive. Very nice control here, so this is kind of the benefit of us going uh, first, losing that first round. He has to react to us, so we can just kind of keep piling on the hits uh, with the fast Queens and with the Helg, and we're in a pretty good position. And now we've got two threes. Okay, sure is probably pretty likely. Um, he could have hit anything and he hit that, so I'm pretty pretty aware again of a sure. So we do Mino into Bribery and go for some value. We don't get that much. But at this point, I'm also thinking, oh wow, our ranged row is pretty full, isn't it? And I'm just a bit concerned of some sort of less rate or something, so I do pick the row removal, so I lose two points, but I just want to get some stuff off that row. I'm just a bit worried. We don't end up seeing it, but I was just a little bit concerned. And now we see Path Coast. So we're in a pretty good spot. You see we have good removal on our hand, we've got a boost, we've got a lock. Um, so we're looking pretty good. We've got all these charges left on board. We have a seize, so I do seize that. Because again, he's playing Shuru. I don't want him to have pings available. Just play Milton out. I'd rather have the lock than the one damage at this point. So now I'm like, okay, three power. Yep, definitely Shuru's sure coming down. Um, but I didn't think he was going to play him until the end, or at least before a Thunderbolt if he had one. So I'm just kind of holding, holding fast here. We do use the ale and put that up to eight. And I'm just saving the lock just in case something weird happens. Yeah, there we are. So that's the weird. So we could remove or lock. I end up locking. I think there's an argument for either or. I guess the um, the damage potentially does more damage if he has a bigger unit later. So. All right. So now I'm like, okay, sure. So everything's at three now. So we do a couple of cute little plays here. We can ping our own units with Pavko. So I do uh, ping down a fire scorpion to put it at two. And then I assassinate that. And what I didn't actually realize at the time um, is that we can actually ping our own units with Fire Scorpions. So I did miss one ping here. I should have pinged uh, Pavko with the Fire Scorpion to put it below three. So he couldn't get Shuru. But here comes Shuru. He's got some pings, so I think he sets two more units up. Uh, or three. Yeah, three. Um, and we still win quite comfortably. So that's that. A lot of games play out like this. Uh, Again, you kind of want to decide whether you want to do portal at the start, portal at the end. Um, don't be overzealous with your mulligans. So, I find it really best to just not be too risky, otherwise you can get some really bricked hands with uh, with witches, with imperial brigades, with portals, with fire scorpions, you know, all that stuff. So don't be too overzealous. Um, you can have some crazy round one openers, and in that case, push on even, get them down a card, uh, works really well. So thanks a lot for watching this video, there's going to be a link to the deck in the comments. And if you want to see me play this deck and a ton of others, then I stream 5 days a week over on twitch.tv forward slash zade underscore 95, so there's a link for that below as well, and I really hope to see you guys over there. Also, this video is part of a series showcasing new decks for patch 3.1 for Team Aratusa, so there's a link for the article and the rest of the videos down below. Thanks everyone so much for watching and I will see you all next time.